Hey, how you doing? Thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio, the eclectic DIY show whose motto is done is better than perfect. All right. Today, we're going to be talking about something that kind of has to be perfect, and that's when you're building your own airplane. Uh, our good friend Rick is building his own airplane, and Nicole's son Otis is very interested in this. And so Nicole and Rick got Otis on the show. I'm going to stand in the background here. And it's the Otis asking Rick questions about his airplane. So welcome, everyone. Well, hi. How is everyone today? Otis, how are you? Good. Yeah. How old are you, Otis? Uh, I'm nine. Nine. What grade does that make you? Uh, I'm in fourth grade. Fourth grade. Wow. So how long have you been interested in airplanes? Since I uh, learned that my grandpa and my uncle... Um, uh, our pilots, so a long time, I think. Oh, wow. You know, the earliest memory I have, one of the earliest memories, I guess I was walking because I, I remember doing this by myself, but uh, we would go to the airport where I grew up, and Dad would take me there, Mom and Dad, just to watch the airplanes come and go. And I can remember standing outside the gate when uh, a Braniff airliner, and that tells you how long ago this was, Braniff died as a company a few decades ago now. And uh, it would pull up, and it was a Convair 660. It had four propellers. And I would salute the pilot, and he saluted me back. And I still remember that. Um and so I, I have been playing crazy for a very long time. And uh, I am glad that you're interested in airplanes and aviation. I think it might be genetic. My uh, His grandmother was a flight attendant, and you can see where that's going. That's where grandma ah. and grandpa met. Was on ah. a 747 flying oh. into Dulles. On a 747? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was a 747. It was uh, Delta. So, okay, so we watched the video again about your about your airplane. And, and we'll, Otis, we'll put a link to the video in our, our show notes so people can watch and have the same um, point of reference. Go ahead. Okay, so Otis, well, I think one of your first questions for Rick was, how did this idea come about? How did you get this idea? <laughs> okay, uh, that's... I have been crazy about airplanes all my life, like I said, and I took my first flying lesson about the time I was 14 or 15, and I got my pilot's license around 16, uh, which is the earliest age you could get it, and flew for a number of years, and then I went off to the Army and got married, and we didn't have enough money to fly, and so we uh, uh, kind of eased into sailboating, which uses all the same skills as uh, flying, it's just slower. And so I got to use that. But now that I, I uh, am older and I have uh, money to, uh, uh, to spare, uh, I decided I'm going to build an airplane. How's that for an okay. answer, Otis? That's a good, yeah. What's your next yeah. question, Otis? Uh, one of my next question is like one out of ten. How hard is it to fly? How say that again? How what? Like how hard is it to fly? How hard how is difficult. it? Yeah, yeah, how difficult how, is it to fly? This airplane, uh, we're talking about a Skyreach Bushcat. Uh, it's a um, essentially a a. a what we call a, a, a stick and cloth airplane, uh, not too much different from a JP, uh, JC or a J um, three cub or um, an Aranka or some of those older airplanes from the forties. Uh, it has okay. two, two seats and it's cloth. And in this case, aluminum tubing. And it's very easy to fly. It's, it's a class of airplane known as a light sport aircraft, LSA. And they are intentionally designed to be very stable, very easy to fly, very easy to land, very predictable. So, yeah, it's it's a very easy airplane to fly. Can your wife fly it, too? Uh, my wife can fly. And uh, uh, her father was a pilot, and they had airplanes all uh, 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 
the eight, you know, all through her growing up years. And so, yeah, she can't fly. Um, oh, that's great. So one out of 10, like how hard is it? 10 is he it. Once you like, put it on a scale between one and 10 of how difficult. Like 10 it is, is like the hardest. Oh, and well, this is like more it. like a, uh, more like a three. Really? Okay. What's your next question? Oh, another one is like, how, how does it like work? Like, how does you, how do you like go up? How does an airplane fly? That's interesting because since I started flying back 60 years ago or so, not quite that much, uh, 65 years ago, the theory of why an airplane flies has changed several times. Uh, when you start taking flying lessons, you'll learn something about, uh, uh, it's called Bernoulli principle. And for a long time, they thought that's why airplanes flew. And then there was uh, the, the Newtonian physics, Newton. And they talked about that as why airplanes flew. And now they're kind of at the conclusion it's between something between the Ber Bernoulli principle and the um, the Newtonian physics that make it fly. But essentially, it's air going over. Have you ever noticed the top of the wing is curved and the bottom of the wing is flat? Yeah. Well, that's that curve causes low pressure on the top side of the wing. And the airplane lifts into that low pressure. Or you can think of it as high pressure under the wing, lifting the uh, wing into the low pressure area above it. It's it's kind of difficult to explain waving your hands. I'm sure you can see my hands in the air waving everywhere. Well, our cameras are turned off. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my problem. Yeah. So, okay, so what's what, your next? Uh, how much did it cost? Like like the whole thing. Well, yeah, the whole thing. That's kind of problematic. Uh, right now, it looks like uh, with the engine, which uh, I bought a brand new engine to put on it, and uh, the oh, engine was about $20,000. And so, um, oh my God. Uh, yeah, we're talking probably seventy five dollars to $80,000 complete. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, but you have to realize this is a new built airplane. And uh, you you can buy used airplanes in the same class or category uh, that are already complete. Uh, you can buy the whole thing for between uh, thirty to to fifty thousand dollars. So, so still, what was the appeal to you of building it yourself? Oh yeah. well, okay. I've 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 always been interested. Um, you know, there are things you know and things you can do. And I've always been interested in things you can do, skill building. Uh, I try to have a lot of basic knowledge about a lot of different things, uh, just like Eric. Eric's always, uh, you know, doing new things, buying a welder, learning to weld, doing TIG, doing MIG, uh, uh, that kind of thing. And I'm kind of the same way. That's the whole point of Garden Fork Radio is building skills, learning to garden, learning to um, uh, chop wood, taking down trees, all, all that kind of thing are skills. And I wanted to have the experience of having to build my own airplane. This one comes in a kit in several boxes. And I, in the video, we saw that in crates. And it's really just as simple as... Uh, uh, taking a, um, a socket wrench and uh, essentially building it kind of like a tinker toy, a very, very large um, Lego set almost. You know, you get the instructions, this part A to part B, and and, uh, and you stand it up on its tires. And, and then uh, you cover it with a fabric that's already pre-cut and pre-measured and, and sewn. And so all you have to do is lace it onto the um, the frame of the aircraft. What the problem? I don't think it's very much like Legos. Like what? 
Oh, not like not Lego. like Lego. Yeah, yeah, you don't use nuts and bolts on a Legos. No. Uh, but, but the concept. But still, yeah, the, the concept. concept you, you buy, a, uh, particularly if you buy Legos uh, after a, a movie or a, a uh, something you've seen, and it's, you know, a star millennium falcon, and, you know, it's take this part, put it here, and their directions every step of the way. Uh, how to build that? And that's that's very much what this is. Uh, what was like the furthest you've ever flown in it? Uh, well, I haven't finished this one yet. Um, uh, it's actually it's been spending a lot of time on the road uh, for a number of reasons. I had trouble getting a hangar here in uh, in Virginia Beach where I live, and uh, initially we started off in a. Um, a, uh, just a storage shed, you know, a rental place, but you can't put wings on there. And so, um, I put it in a truck and we took it down to Florida and, uh, I have a hanger down there and now I have a hanger here. And, and so we had trouble getting some parts, uh, because of the pandemic and whatnot. And, uh, the engine took a real long time because it's the same engine, the, uh, that Turkey, Iran, Russia and the United States is using in some of their drones. <laughs> and so it's, oh. it, it's been a little hard to get hold of this engine I wanted. So it's taking longer, about six months longer than I wanted. Normally it takes, you could build this in about 250 hours of work. So uh, if you had all the pieces right there and, and you worked on it consistently. Hey, would you like more of Garden Fork or more of Eric? Would you like to get it in your email inbox? I send out, just about every week, I send out a little email about Eric's world and new stuff I posted. I even talk about podcasts I've listened to or just interesting stuff. And usually, almost always, at least one picture of the Labradors. You can get that by signing up for Eric's Garden Fork email newsletter thing. There should be a link in the notes to this show, or go to gardenfork.tv and on almost every page at the top of the page should be a sign up. Well, what was your first thought? Like, not like, why did you want to, but like, what was your first thought about the plane? Like, Oh, when, well, when I saw it, I, I just kind of fell in love with it. it. I wanted to do something myself. I wanted to, uh, enough for me and my wife to uh, to fly around in this is not a it's a very slow what we call a uh, short takeoff and landing aircraft it's made for short unimproved fields and, um, and going places nearby it's not the kind of airplane you get in and go uh, uh, you know reliably 3,000 miles in or something. Uh, just because it, you, uh, it's actually possible this airplane flies so slow sometimes, you can look down on the highway and see cars passing you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Uh, so it, it only travels about 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour uh, at its, uh, its best, but it can get into very short fields and unimproved fields. And so it's, you know, there are all kinds of different, you know, you buy a pickup truck to do work. You buy a sports car to go fast. Um, you know, there are all kinds of reasons to have different kinds of vehicles, different kinds of cars. Well, they're the same way with airplanes. You have a different reason to have a different kind of airplane. And so uh, traveling long distances was not my goal, uh, particularly when I can get on Southwest um and normally be there uh, overnight for less than $400. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to fly an airplane, your own airplane that far. What was like the biggest part about building it? You mean the uh, hardest part? No, the, like the biggest, yeah, basically the biggest or hardest part. Well, the, the biggest part is hoisting the engine up and getting it on there. Uh, this is the same engine, by the way, that's used uh, not only in all those drones, but it's used by a lot of major motorcycle companies. Uh, uh, you'll see them in Hondas and Kawasaki's. And um, it's about a 110-pound engine. 
and getting it mounted on the front of the airplane, hoisting it up and getting it situated exactly right. Uh, that was the heaviest work to be done. The most intricate work, uh, and frankly, the most mentally difficult is doing all the wiring because you have to, uh, run a wire. You actually have to run two wires for every item on the plane. And so to every light, you've got to run two wires, uh, to every piece of electronics, you got to run two wires. And then the engine has tons of wires that come off of it for uh, temperature and oil pressure and, and, um, RPM and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, to keep that all in line, get it done properly, bundle it together and keep track of which, which wire goes to which part is, was the most, uh, time consuming and challenging part of the build. Well, why did you choose the bush? Cap? Like what was the decision in your mind that made that? Well, you're too young to know about nostalgia. Uh, nostalgia is thinking back when you were young or for a period before you were born even. And uh, nostalgia is thinking back to where before you were born or from times when you're young and saying, you know, I, I kind of want to live that life again. And these are the airplanes that I saw when I was young. Um, uh, Aronkas and Champs and J3 Cubs and uh, and I just kind of wanted to have that experience um, in an easy to build, easy to fly, easy to maintain aircraft. Uh, and all I want to do is go out and, you know, uh, I'll take it out over the ocean and, and do a little whale watching uh, in the in the winter here. Uh, we'll uh, fly, you know, go look at fall colors in the mountains in the Appalachians. We'll uh, there are several little resorts all along the Appalachians we can fly to and land and uh, spend a weekend or something. Just doing stuff close to home that you would kind of do in a car, but um, just, you know, it's it's something that uh, kind of makes me feel like I was uh, uh, your age again or a little older. Uh, what, how high can it go? How high? It is, it is um, certified to go up to, I think, 12,000 feet. Um, I would never go that high. 10,000 is, uh, you, once you get up to around 10,000, you need to have oxygen, supplemental oxygen to breathe. And um, once you get above that altitude, you're flying with the really big boys. And, um, and so you, d you don't want to get up there and get in their way. Um, for me, probably my average altitude when I was training in this airplane, I went down to Florida and, and, uh, uh, took some lessons and got a, uh, recertified my license and stuff in it. And, uh, 3000 feet was plenty high enough for almost everything. Uh, a lot of the time we spend down around 1400 feet, 1500 feet, something like that. I'd say, what was the hardest part about, like, getting it all, like, getting this, the materials? The hardest part was arranging for the engine and the electronics myself. Uh, if I had bought it complete, that had all been taken care of. Uh, but uh, there were a lot of pieces that uh, didn't come with the kit, and I had to choose, research, and choose which pieces I wanted to go on there and then uh, make sure they were certified to be in that type of aircraft. Uh, it's a very highly regulated business. And so, um, you know, it's uh, a matter of uh, how much money do you have to spend and how do you want to spend it? What matters to you? Awesome. Okay, Otis, what's your, your most important last question? My most important last question. Or do you have anything you just want to say about it? Like, what do you think? I think that it's a very compact plane. What, how does like the cotton work to like the how does how does it work like to the like the materials to build it? How do they go together? It's a kit that you uh, you bolt the frame together and then you just uh, cover it with the fabric. And um, in my case, the fabric is laced on instead of uh, what we call doping. Uh, it's actually laced on, 
and it's a, a special lay. It's a special tri-laminate um, uh, cell cloth, actually, that is uh, really rugged and hard. And uh, I wanted that so I didn't have to fool with it too much. So uh, you know, it's it's all of one piece. You just uh, you get the directions, and it comes in a big book, and you do uh, page one, and you page two and you go through about page 500 and 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 you finally get there do you think you want to do this otis maybe when i'm a little bit older but now what do you think you have to know otis to be a pilot i think you have to know like like how fast if you put up the throttle how fast like an inch of the throttle goes like how if you pull back what happens the important things to know about being a pilot are things you could start doing now. Really? Uh, yeah, you bet. You need to understand weather, meteorology. You need to understand uh, a little bit of math because uh, you need to understand weight and balances. You have to be able to uh, measure how much weight you're putting in the airplane because the airplane will only carry about 800 pounds. And so you can't put more than that in there. Uh, you have to understand mechanics, uh, how an engine works. Uh, do you know how a four cycle engine works? That kind of thing. How does the fuel supply work? Uh, you need to understand maps and navigation. You need to understand radio communications. And so there are a lot of things you can do today to get ready to be a pilot in the future. And you just don't wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a pilot. Or at least if you do, you're going to be way behind. You want to be ready. I'd already, by the time I was 14, I had, or 15, I had passed my written examination to be a pilot. And I understood navigation and weather and mechanics and combustion engines and electronics those are all things that you can study today to be a pilot in the future. And the other thing you can do is uh, join a, um, a sailing program because you wouldn't believe how much sailing, uh, even in youth sailing programs like Optimus programs, uh, you use in, um, in flying. How the uh, sail on your sailboat is exactly like a wing. You use it like a wing. Uh, it actually lifts into the air, except in this case, the wing is sticking straight up and your keel, the other wing, is sticking straight down. But you're actually flying those things through the water. And so you have to understand uh, mechanics. You have to understand uh, shaping the sail, uh, how to uh, play the weather and the wind and have a feel for those things and so you could start off in a youth sailing program and make yourself into a better pilot uh, for the future awesome this was really helpful don't you think so otis yeah oh yeah you you don't yeah. sound enthused at all i know you don't sound enthusiastic i think he has another question oh do you have another question otis uh no that's it awesome well thank you so much Oh, my Rick, pleasure. I really appreciate it. Nicole, it's always great to talk with you. Eric, are you still here? Yeah, I love this where I don't have to do anything for the podcast. Yeah. Thank you, Otis, for running the show. <laughs> okay. Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Mm-hmm.